Ashley Watson, thanks for coming on the Coffee Club podcast. My absolute yeah. pleasure, mate. Thank you for having me. So you were a retired gymnast now. Yes. What was that like starting this year without any kind of gymnastics-based goals? Because I guess every other year you kind of start the year and you're like, oh, this year I want to try and achieve this or whatever. What was that like? Just being like, oh, shit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> It was good, but also a little bit scary. Yeah, it was. obviously I've been brought my whole life with targets and goals and, you know, place I need to get to at a certain time or whatever. And to sort of wake up in the morning and be like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> what do I do now sort of thing. But, you know, it's, it was it was good for a period of time. You know, it was it was good fun. I've had, I've had a bit of time off and enjoyed myself. Relaxed. Everyone says to me, like, oh, you can have like a beer on a weeknight and don't feel guilty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've had a few of those. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone says that one to me. Uh, must be strange feeling though, but... Doing gymnastics. How many years we did you do gym? Um, oh god, you can show me age now. I did gymnastics for about nineteen years, I believe. Nineteen years of your life. So your yeah. whole life, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, my whole life. Yeah. I started quite late. I started at seven. Yeah. That's quite late for yeah, a gymnast. Same as me. Yeah, seven. Is it? Yeah, you know, how did you get into gymnastics? Um, me and my twin brother. Too much energy jumping off the cabinets and stuff. You know the whole usual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it your mum, mum or dad that got into you, or was it someone else like? No, my parents. My yeah. parents. I don't know why they chose gymnastics. I don't really have a sporty family. Um, but I think they just seem like an advert in the local leisure centre or something. So I thought, oh, we'll throw them in there. Like, we'll have to jump around. Do you remember, can you remember when we up. first met? Oh, no. This is good. I can remember this. Oh, this is no. Story. This is, so, NDPs back in the day were obviously a massive. Yeah, thing. yeah. My first ever NDPs up in Newcastle. The whole family comes. And we stayed at like this Premier Inn or Travel Lodge, standard kind of thing. And uh, we're playing football in the park outside, right? Right. So my family's like pretty boisterous. We've got yeah. me, and my brother, like my sister, my two cousins, and your family was there as well. Quite and we challenged well. you to a footy match. Oh really? And it got really <laughs> aggressive as well. Like slide tackles going in, and my cousin's going, "Oh, my cousin's gonna beat you in the morning." Like, your brother's going, "Oh, my, my brother's gonna smash you." Really? In the, yeah. And then we thought we were in the same age group. And normally, yeah. when you get when stuff like that happens yeah. when you're a kid, it turns out the other guy's actually not that good, and he comes like fifty. Yeah. But I was like, you were in the other age group, and you scored like perfect ten in PPP yeah. and won the age group. And we were like, oh, oh that guy's really good. Oh, <laughs> that's God. the first time. I don't remember yeah, that. Mate, that's the first time we ever met, man. <laughs> I was really? literally, I must have been eight years old or something. Yeah. Me, you may be nine. So yeah. we've known each other for a long, long yeah, time, man. Yeah, oh, crazy. God. That was a crazy story. Uh, <laughs> what have you been up to since you retired? So what are you getting, what are you getting into? Um, I know you're doing a bit of the uh, stunting and the, the world record. Oh, yeah. Mad. That Just having a bit of fun. Up. Yeah, like, oh, I want is not expecting that. I was not expecting that. I was going to bring my plaque as well to show you, but I forgot. Oh, mate. It was too was early, mate, when I woke up. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, mate. Don't usually get up past before 11 nowadays. So, yeah, I'm trying to get into the stunt work. So I started, like, scuba diving, started a bit of kickboxing. But I don't know if you saw, I broke my ankle a couple of months ago. See that, so, yeah. So, uh, so all so, yeah, your injuries in gymnastics. Stopped. You had some big injuries yeah. in gymnastics, but then you yeah. fell off a segue and broke your ankle. Yeah. Was it the... Do you, are all your injuries been on one side? or Yeah, even my broken ankle now on, so, the, on my left leg. Mate, see, I've got this theory that so my left foot is a whole shoe size bigger than my right, and all my bad injuries I've had, I've broke my leg, my foot, my ankle, and then the discation, that, it's all been on that left side. I'm convinced because it's just clumsier because it's bigger. It just oh, like, hits the floor. Yeah, right. Right. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know whether yours are... Uh... We'll measure them after this. <laughs> How did you... Um, so when you started in gymnastics, when you first got into it, in the early years, what was it, what was kind of, did you just do it for fun or what was your motivation getting into it? Because I can remember going to like early into Leeds camps when we were younger and I loved them going, yeah, going to Leeds, they were awesome, yeah, we had like pizza and Dr. Pizza and Dr. Pepper. Pizza, Dr. Pepper, yeah. When Niall came, we talked about that as well. It was just, yeah. we just did it for the fun. Yeah, yeah. But I can remember like, so your coach, Chris, I can remember Chris being pretty tough on you mm-hmm. as a kid. When you started out, was it just for the enjoyment? Like, cause uh, but early on, like, it was tough. He was tough yeah. on you, mate. I can remember well, thinking, I, "Wow, yeah. I'm glad I'm not Ash." <laughs> yeah, he used to scare <laughs> me. He used to scare me when I go to camp. So I used to think, <sighs> "Yeah, he'd scare me." I'd like do everything perfect. And they were, um, they yeah. were easier on camps as well. Yeah, because people were watching. Yeah, nah, they were nothing like abusive or not like that. Like, yeah. you know, he, he had his moments, but. To give him credit, he, he was at uni himself and he was doing his uh, his masters and his doctorate, so he was stressed out. The last mm. thing he wants after a full day at uni is for me to come 
tired because I didn't get no sleep. Yeah. And I've been at school all day, and I, I, I don't want to do all my conditioning. And I just want to get on trampoline and throw some flips. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah, well, as the last kids, thing you, you want. Can, like, yeah, as kids, man, you, you, yeah. I see the little kids in the gym. You can be yeah. like, it could be yeah. a nightmare to try and control. Yeah. Um, so it's tough, yeah. But I yeah. can just remember you just working like a machine. Like, yeah. Well, I, I loved it as well. I yeah. loved it. Absolutely loved it. I still, I still do love it. Uh, it's just gymnastic, man. Isn't it? You Best can part. see, you can see that though. You can yeah. see that when you're in the gym, you can yeah. see that you still love it. I think that's it's tough when you see someone that like properly does love it, and then they yeah. go through a lot of yeah. It's just life, isn't it? It's yeah. life. Oh, yeah, can you like, go two ways about it? Can and you can you can take that two ways, can't you? You can yeah. either deal with that and be like get make, gets you down, or you. Exactly. Yeah, you were always that figure in the gym, the big bear, the, the positive guy. Yeah, that would uh, kind of pull everyone up. Thank nah. you. There's there's few people there's few people in in gymnastics, you know, that I watch and I go, I want that guy to do well. And even if I do bad, yeah, you know, if I have a crap comp, I can kind of go, oh, at least he's done well. Or, you know, there's a few like you, like Frank. I feel like that went yeah. about as well. For a bit. like, there's a few guys that I yeah. think oh, really you just want Cheers, him to Sam. do well. Um, and you, yeah, you I did my best. Yeah, mate, you had, I did my a, best. You had an amazing career, I man. Tried, you had an amazing I tried. career. Like, yeah. ju- as a junior, I can remember you had a purple patch. Mm. You had a real purple patch. I think, was it kind of 2008, 2009? Yeah. Yeah. So I that, prom- that, was, that was the beginning of the end, that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I can remember at that time, like, you were, like, yeah. shooting past everyone else. Yeah, and it was but- when Serg had first became a national coach and he used to go yeah. and see you like once a week yeah, on yeah, Wednesday did, yeah. and he'd come back to Huntingdon where I'd move and he'd be like, oh, yeah. Ash has done this, Ash has tried triple yeah. straight and I can remember at the time being a bit but he'd come to my club and be like, Sam's doing this <laughs> and Sam's doing that, you <laughs> were working all yeah, I can remember at the time being jealous and be like, fuck, he's yeah, yeah. just getting all his time off cert. and you were like improving as yeah. well because I think, did you win the British that year, 2008? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. and then 2009, A off, you won yeah, A off yeah. and won like everything. Yeah. Um, so what can you when you look back then now? Did you remember that as being like a really great time in your career? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yeah, well back then I was I was an all around gymnast, like all around gymnast, sort of like the the lead singer of a band. You know what I mean? Like that's when you think of a gymnast, like you say gymnast, you think about the all rounders, don't you? Because they're doing everything and you know top dogs. Um, I do miss those times. Yeah, I don't necessarily miss doing the apparatus I just miss being a part of the whole all around sort of yeah. you know because there's certain people around the, the country and the world like you know you compare yourself to like the all arounders all arounders like yeah. I wish I could have still been in that field Yeah. like now like I, I like sometimes imagine like what I'd be doing and what sort of my all round score would be and where I'd be in the world now if I never had my injuries yeah. and still did all around that's an that's interesting point actually because mm. like when I've been injured in the past and come back and do you start with like one or two pieces or three or four. You mm. almost don't feel like complete. It's almost like yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Because of the training, you don't do yeah. six apparatus. You're just doing like two or three yeah. or even four. It's such a big difference yeah. from doing two, three, four to it six. It takes a while to get used to that as well. Yeah. Like when you drop pieces, you still want to do the same amount of hours. But instead of spending half an hour on each piece a day, you're spending two hours on each piece each day, and then then you're more likely to break down and get injured again yeah. because you're, you're overloading certain muscles and that stuff. Must be, that's really tough, actually. To yeah. I would find that well hard to just yeah. jump down to, say, two. Like people, yeah, well, you're people, one of the hardest workers I know. <laughs> just I people on high bar, I'd be like, oh, I've got to do three hours. Of, yeah. I feel bad or almost guilty I'm not yeah. doing the hours. You're doing, like, 20 of each element, five routines every day. Like, nah, it takes a different mindset. You sort of yeah. got yeah, that, I, I guess that's it. something you you developed over a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. Did... Well, I think naturally I'm quite lazy anyway. Like, a... I don't know about well, that. Well, like, I don't, I, know, I don't know. Like, like... I can remember. I can remember. Can you remember when we used to do testing at Little Shaw? Yeah. I can remember you doing muscle ups, mate, and you just cry in your eyes. Like, <laughs> trying to do ten muscle ups, like it looked so hard. <laughs> it was so hard. <laughs> Uh, I don't it think well, you did, makes I my, think you did eight my, or nine. My arms, my arms don't bend, look, my caps touch my shoulders. <laughs> so I managed to try to get your shoulders over the rings. It was so hard for me. I just remember that, like, for just like slogging it out. I, like, I, I do just crying Chris, in your eyes. Chris standing there looking at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. All the good old yeah, days. They were, mate, they were. 2009, so going on after mm. A-off, into that summer you went to Japan. <sighs> and so that... 
I can remember again being like jealous of you and Reese going out to Japan yeah. like at that age what were yeah. we 2009 what, 15, 16 yeah, something like that, that. Yeah. so going out there to Japan like the other side of the world Japan obviously incredible at gymnastics I was like oh my god that's going to be yeah. an incredible trip just take me through that how that because that kind of started the, yeah the beginning of the yeah, end the yeah. kind of the um, so what happened was so we went to Japan and I was buzzing because I think I'd just won the British so that so then they said okay you go to Japan whoever wins the British goes to Japan yeah, yeah, yeah. so absolutely buzzing Japan mate come on so I'm there we travelled there with, with Bedford yeah um, it was in the hour warm up I was doing double twisting Nuchenko on vault um, and basically in the hour warm up I sort of twisted I landed sort of my leg stayed still and the rest of my body just kept going so I just totally snapped my ACL um, and then obviously all these Japanese doctors came over, I was like playing around, they, they, they must have known I was snapped me because literally my shin bone was popping out, do you know what I mean, you've seen it before, mm-hmm. like with, with Gianni and stuff. Yeah. Um, so but they just strapped it up, I could hardly bend it, but I could walk, because you can walk and I snapped it, so yeah. and because I strapped it, I could sort of move and stuff, so I was like, well, I've come all the way to Japan, I was like, I felt guilty because BG had paid for me to go out there, like I felt like I'd be letting everybody down. And I bet we didn't have a physio with you there. It's no, we like, didn't, no. Um, so then I was like, oh, well, I'll carry on. So we started floor. I was like, no, nah, I won't do floor. We'll just do the other pieces, buzzing. Got through a palm routine, made the final. <laughs> and, then, and then got to rings, and I was doing um, a full, falling back out dismount, I think it was. So like, I'll just do a, a double back, no twisting, just keep it safe. So I did my rings routine, did the dismount. As I landed, I literally felt my, my knee just go warm. And then that's when I mashed my cartilage. So if I wouldn't have done that, I probably would still be an all round gymnast now. But because I mashed my cartilage, I had to have some of it shaved off and stuff, and that's what keeps coming back. I've had a couple of surgeries on that, and that's that's what keeps flaring up. It's not the ACL itself. Right. It's like the cartilage. It's the cartilage damage. Yeah. Maybe. So, if I want to try to troop through, then yeah, it would be a different story. But you don't know, hindsight, hindsight's oh, a bitch, that's you know what that's I mean? a wonderful thing. Like, yeah. You can sit here and say, oh, I haven't done this. I yeah, done this, exactly, but... exactly. But yeah, mate, it yeah. just came at the worst time, didn't it? Yeah. You know, and you're just riding yeah. this wave and it was, mm-hmm. what we, we were only a few months out from the Junior Euros in 2010, yeah. that was obviously yeah. going to be a massive... That massive, was a heartbreak, yeah. That would have been a massive thing for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can remember that was the first, you were the first person of our generation that got a big injury like that. Yeah, so I, I think, think so, kind of scared yeah. everyone else, everyone was yeah. like, oh... Out for like nine months. Yeah, this is like, I see it, we're actually doing a serious thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's tough, man. And then after that... I'm sh- you, did you try and get back? To I came. I came back. I came back. Made my first comeback. First of many. When um, was that? When I did you first do six pieces? Do you remember? It would have been the year after. I think. At like the end of twenty ten or something like that. Yeah, something like that. It was like it was like nine months. I was back to full training. Nine months. So it would have been the the following British or something. And what was it like back then? Because. I can't even remember. We didn't really have the the setup of like the EIS and stuff. So no. Like, how did you? I, I was lucky because I had Jill. No, Jill Cannon, the, f- yeah. the physio, I was lucky because she's a great yeah, woman. Great, so yeah. so she sort of sorted me out and you know, helped me out and stuff. But we didn't have the sport like we do now. Like we didn't have none of like, the S&C, the physios on hand and the yeah. whole covering and stuff. So I, I was I was lucky. If it could have happened to anybody, it should happen to me because <laughs> I had great support. Yeah, yeah that support there. Yeah. So you got back, end of 2010, you were competing again. 2011, 2012, 2012 was obviously coming around, and like yeah. for our generation, that was like that was the mm. thing, wasn't it? Because mm. we had gone from being, yeah, you know, ranked 23rd in the world, having no money, then we got yeah. this funding, we got the bid for London, and like our age group, everyone was talking about it, yeah. Um, even yeah. before AOF, I can remember like BBC or someone coming to a little show and they were asking us questions yeah, about yeah. it, and like, well, this is actually a big thing, yeah. So, what was that like for you watching that and kind of because it will have been your one of your dreams yeah, to yeah. have gone to of course, yeah, of course. Games and competed in 2012 what was that like it was that thing? mixed emotions obviously still, I guess at that stage you were probably still thinking oh, I'm still young I've got another yeah so like yeah. I said mixed emotions one I was upset because yeah. I really wanted to go there and I sort of had my mind set on I was going yeah. um, but then also happy for you yeah. watching my teammate go out there and smash it do you know what I mean so I was buzzing for you um, and also I was young I, I sort of realised I got a long career ahead of me so yeah. you know I've got at least one or maybe two more chances to give it a bash um, so yeah I want yeah. like I said I pride myself on being able to deal with it 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I sort of try and find the, the silver linings or the bright side if there is one. Mm. Or I'll just make one up yeah. just to fool myself. No. And then after 2012, so 2012 goes by and that, there's a buzz, we get loads more money, we get loads more funding. Mm. 2013 comes along and you, that was probably one of the best years oh, of your yeah. career. Oh yeah, 2013. In 2013, yeah. you went to Euros in Moscow. Got a final. Got a final. Fell off, we won't talk about that. <laughs> and then you went to the Worlds as well in that year, so yeah. like two major champs in that year, what was that year like? And at that point, had you decided just to specialise or were you still Ye- doing? Yes, I was doing four pieces then. Right. I'd taken out floor and vault because my cartilage came back out and I had a cyst. So I had another surgery and it was like, nah, game over. There's no point even trying. Uh, let's just specialise because P-bars and high bar are my best pieces anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I went to Europeans, got a high bar final. Then Worlds, that was a, a mission that was getting inside. I, ended up doing, I, I remember putting a straddle front in because I needed to get a big start value. And I think I, think I was injured before that, so I I was like, I'll just go gun ho and just put my biggest routine together. And if it don't pan out, it don't yeah. pan out. So we was at South Essex, I think. You know, yeah. We did like yeah, trial yeah, yeah. at South Essex, and I yeah. put in straddle front to catch. But then I remember in training at Lillishall a couple of weeks before we went out to Worlds, this straddle front and literally snapped my finger on my way through and crumbled. And I remember every day having to tape up my finger because I'd literally broke the ligament there, taping it. Imagine doing it under somebody's. It ripping, oh my god, that was so painful. And I had a rip on my hand, but obviously I was only doing P bars and high bar, so I had to show routines every other day. Yeah. So then it was sort of like compromising, doing a routine there, then resting, not using my doing hand, nothing. letting it heal over just enough to make it feel like it's yeah. going to heal, and then next day doing another under something, and just ripping my hand open again. Oh, oh, it's, good it's always the way isn't it? you think you're like you start doing well you're yeah, like oh, and then you yeah, get a little yeah. thing you'll stub a finger or yeah. something like you get a rip or something it's like it just never seems to be smooth no, it's never smooth no. it'd, be, think, it'd be boring though wouldn't it it if would you, you just gotta accept that like, these things are gonna yeah. come up it's more how you deal with it and how you just kind of yeah. keep calm and that but that 2013 was that was a mission I can remember that yeah. whole process can you remember I can remember the Christian Theo yeah, vault yeah. situation. That was madness. That was mad. That should be turning into a film. That, that was. That was I've never seen anything like that. I spoke, to, I spoke about that on one of my vlogs once. That mm. was, yeah, that was just mad. But we also had a similar situation on high bar. Yeah. Do you remember that? Me, and it you, was me Christian. and Christian. It was over two weeks. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we're going to do six bar routines. Yeah. And whoever wins the most yeah. is going to go to the world champion. It's just mad. That, 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 that. It was that. mad that that, that was brutal. the way that they did yeah. that. Um, I think in the end, Chris Chris went in the end and, and competed. Yeah. It was, yeah. um, but that was just, yeah. it was pressure. That's yeah, pressure. Well, yeah, it's well. weird. And we're all doing big bar routines yeah. as well. Yeah, big releases. Yeah, like. exactly. Like just three oh, of us going up head to head. That was so scary. That. Yeah, I can remember like sitting down so and scary. Then decide who would yeah. kind of go. And, yeah. it, and it's not always pretty, it's not always easy. You know? no, people no. ain't going to, People have put a lot of work into that. Yeah, so exactly. I can remember, I can yeah. remember people f- walking out and like, yeah. storming out of like yeah. decisions and stuff. Mm-hmm. You just kind of have to. Some you kind of got to go. Okay, some time it's going to go my way. Sometimes it yeah. won't go my way. Yeah. I can just remember that being a, a real precious yeah. situation. So that, going back to Moscow, that Europeans, because I didn't. So I was in that final with you, and but I went back out. So I can't remember. I didn't even see your routine. Okay. So I can't even remember what you I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> 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 I said I don't want to talk about it. It was the um it was the Coleman. I missed my Coleman. So I think it was quite a new skill in my routine. Um because obviously I had my death and stuff in there. Yeah. I remember in the um in the warm up hall I did a death. I missed and I sort of landed on my shoulder and like he pinged my shoulder and I was like, Oh, I'm gonna take death out, like I don't wanna do it, sort of thing. Yeah. And another coach is saying, well, look, like, you might as well, you've made the final, like, if you take the death out, you're losing, you know, point five or six or what it is, and then you're losing almost a mark start value, yeah. so there's almost no point being in the final if you're already on mark down. Yeah. So, yeah, screw it, let's do it, let's go, let's have it. Then, like, I was, I was almost, like, elated that I'd done my death and sort of thing, it was, like, yeah, Coleman, was quite was, almost, yeah, I've done it. Yeah, yeah. like, a lapse in judgment, like, oh, yeah. like, it's just Coleman now, nice and easy, and I just sort of just, like, next thing I knew I was on the floor. It's like god damn it because then if I could have won a medal then I could have jumped up in funding and yeah. do you know at the time I, I was either getting paid and like you sort of you had to do something massive to get you know half a decent wage it's all these implications so, and it's all yeah. these big things and it's just that pressure yeah. that people people they see that the tip of the tip of the iceberg exactly. they don't see what's going yeah. on and all that 
Is that the right? rubbish in between it leading up to them events. Yeah. And I think, can you remember when you were up in that final? Because I think Fabian was first and I think Fabian fell. Oh, I'm not Fabian sure. Like a squat fall or something. And fell or something. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes when you're in that final where the big guys fell, it's almost more pressure. Yeah, it's like, oh, my way. Like, yeah. Yeah, I could, I could get us Because sometimes yeah. you want to be in them finals where everyone just hits and then it's just whoever's yeah, got yeah. the best routine kind yeah. of wins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you also don't, but the only one yeah. that, that fucks it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I could, my first ever final was in Coppers, I think it was. I qualified first, and there's all the big guys were in it. It was like Sondland, yeah. Fabian, and they, I was like sixth, and they all went up, and they all fell, and I was sixth. Right. And so in my head, I'm going, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, no way. <laughs> <laughs> fell straight off. Ah. <laughs> so that's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes sometimes. And then, so like, I want to jump to you choosing to go to uni. Yes. And that whole decision, is that something you wanted yeah. to do from when you were a youngster? Do you think Chris had a big impact on that? Um, definitely, and my parents, and, you know, obviously Chris going to uni as well, he, he obviously prioritised education over over gymnastics and stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, thought, I think it was partly as well a bit of convenience because at the time, Leeds Gymnastics Club was on Carnegie campus. So you're sort of like... I'd go at 9 o'clock in the morning, go to a lecture or a seminar, train, go to a lecture or a seminar, train, then go on. Yeah. Sort of thing. And then, so it, it was, it was lucky that I sort of had that because I could sort of balance it all together. Mm. So I know it's, it's, it's hard to be a, a high level sportsman and go to uni, but also I'm a big believer in you, you need a distraction from the gym. You need, even if it's a hobby or something outside yeah. of gym and also... You know, you've got, you got to think longevity. You can't just, you sort of, gymnastics world, you're in a bubble. You know, I mean, that's all it is, is live or die gymnastics. But then you've got to look outside that of when you finish, like I have now, you finish and it's like, what now? Mm. Oh God, what now? So you got to, I think, I think everyone should do uni or further education or, you know, look into a career path outside of gymnastics. Just in case, you never know what's going to happen. Never mm-hmm. know what's happened. I was going to ask you that. So now, having gone all through that, yeah, would you? You definitely don't regret ever going no. full time committing to it or anything like that. No, no, no. no I, I don't think I would have got any further in my gym career if I wouldn't have gone to uni. Yeah, I think I probably would have done better in uni if I didn't go to gym. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. However, I still graduated and I, I still have my degree. Yeah. Um, but. For me, it, I always had so much respect to them, for anyone that did gym and studied alongside it. Like, yeah. Because it's, you know, it's like when you've been in the gym like, and you do yeah. routines for six hours. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to do was go and study, so I always had so much respect for the yeah. guys that were doing that. Yeah. Um, and it was, it's, I look at it now and I think, I wish there was something in place in the system that encouraged yeah. us to go into education. You know, because when, yeah. when I was 16, I, almost the system almost encourages you to not. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like when you're 16, finish school, go full time, and just go. Yeah, for yeah. Start, like I took start that risk. afternoon training and yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when you're 16, 15, yeah. 16, if you tell a 15, 16 year old kid, look, you can just go to the gym yeah. and train all the yeah. time, and then you don't have to do anything else, they're gonna go, yeah. oh, brilliant. Yeah, they're not. You know, they're not yeah. thinking as if they were 25 at the end of their career. They're thinking, oh, I've got 10, 12, 11 years left in my yeah. gymnastics career. I don't need to worry about it yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So for me, I always think, I wish there's something in place that would encourage. Yeah. You know, like the uni systems they've got in America and in Japan yeah. even. Yeah. Like all their gymnasts go to uni and study and stuff. Yeah. I think for me, that would be a big, big benefit if we could get the young mm-hmm. kids coming through into education alongside the gymnastics. Like, I definitely think that would be, be a big benefit and to the And it's somebody like you... To uh, put it forward, uh, maybe, mate, maybe, maybe they're watching this now. And uh, what uh, you went to uni games, right? <gasps> yes. And you got, did you get you got injured? Yet again, shock. What year was that? <laughs> no, so I went to Kazan. Yeah, I think that was two thousand and thirteen as well. Two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Um, Is that where but you did would, your Achilles? No, oh, no. So that was the. Two is it every two years? Two years two later, years, yeah. I, was, I meant to go to China. In twenty fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, two thousand fifteen, just before it was like a week before. And so, did you get back to doing six for China? Yeah. So you had come back again to start doing. Oh six yeah, man! I've had yeah many yeah. a comeback, me. Yeah. So after the so after the twenty thirteen year, did you think then? Okay, I'm going to get back to six pieces. Okay, so 2014, <laughs> we started training at Urschel. 
the sinister set the seven of us yeah remember? okay so yeah. we start being based at this or we all would go up there every single week so that was 2014 right so was that when you started getting back on six pieces it must have been yeah because yeah. i because I, I did it on floor before going to china like a week before china so i must have been. i can remember that was a big I can remember hearing that and just being like, "Oh my god!" You know when you're in the yeah. gym and you hear, "Oh, some so and so's got injured yeah. or whatever," and you just it's like, like, "Oh, actually injured again." Oh yeah, like yeah. But when it's like someone that's had a big oh, injury oh, and they yes. have another big one, it's, yeah. Yeah, what was that? Because I, I think it's something crazy. Like the, I know that the percentage, the, the risk you're at having had a big injury of right. getting another one is super super high. Yeah. What was that one like? That um, because for me they're the two scariest. The the knee. The knee and the Achilles snapping. Yeah. They're the two that freak me out and I'm like, I just don't want that yeah. like to ever happen. What was that what was that one like? And was it like everyone says? Because everyone says it sounds like a gunshot and No, it didn't. Like I think man, I think usually it's it's it snaps at the bottom, like just under your heel. I think it pings off bone and then it makes a really loud banging noise. But mine sort of it was halfway up. It sort of just like just tore apart. Okay, like splitting half almost. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, oh. uh, so yeah, it was on floor. So I was setting up for a, a double Arabian. So as I took off, it just felt like my foot went through the floor. I thought I broke the floor. I thought my foot went through the floor. So I sort of did one somersault or rolled out. So I stood up to turn around to say, I think I just broke the floor and then kind of just crumbled down I was having a feeling I was like it's gone it's gone like then Ali at the time with physio he came running over and I was effing and blinding and all that kind of initial response um, and then yeah finally I stopped me with my Achilles and that was it was hard it was one of the harder ones because obviously I've had the big injuries before and I sort of I knew what you was know, coming then. you know what's coming yeah you? I know what's coming and I know I like, is, it, is it just like and then for the next couple of months it's like should I just give in like but then I, I I never really achieved what I wanted to achieve, so I could never really let go. Do you know what I mean? So it's so hard because obviously I've already gone through all of this. Do you know what I mean? So it almost makes it harder for me to not. It's almost like I've wasted all that time and all that time coming back and working through it and stuff. It makes it harder to let go of that goal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%, mate. I've been yeah. there, like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a horrible injury. Yeah. It is. And did you, so on the second time round, did it take you, you said obviously you took a few months to decide, did it take you longer to get that, okay, I want it, I want it back, I still want it, than it did the first time, I guess the first time when you did your knee, the, originally yeah. you were young and you just wanted to go straight away, you wanted yeah. really quick, whereas this time it took you a bit more time to really kind of take it in. And Yeah, exactly, it was just like that, yeah. I had like a, a month or two where I was just like, nah, like, you know what I mean, just sack it, nah, I don't need this, like, yeah. It's happened again, like, you know, I'm never going to go anywhere and all that kind of stuff. So it's almost like the, the grieving process. You know what I mean, you got to go through that to sort of bring yourself back out of it. Um, but, yeah, it's just... And then being... Just being in the gym, like, I made sure I went into the gym to do all my rehab and stuff, then watch people train and then yeah. come up to squad, see the physios and you guys are on squad training. It was just like, do you know what? No, this is what I want. Yeah. Like, this ain't going to stop me. Not this time. I think sometimes it's... the. the when you got injured, initially you just got to be in the gym. It doesn't matter if you do yeah. anything. Just if you're in there, it means you yeah. still want to be there. Yeah. Because I've there's been times when I've just gone in and I've yeah. just sat down and ch- talked to Sergey yeah. for hours and I don't actually yeah. do anything. Yeah. Um. And like the end of that 2015, so you've had that injury. That was probably like middle of the summer one at Uni Games. Is normally like June, July, something like that. Yeah. Well, it was August. Yeah. Yeah. End August. of July because it was like a week before Yeah. Day. I can remember you competing at the end of that year in. Oh, we did a trial for the world. And we were like the B team, can't remember. It's like yeah. me, you, Keith, yeah. Courtney, James, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, we had a, we all had a pretty decent. Yeah, we did. We really smashed that. Right yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can remember that. And then, um, so going into twenty sixteen, you were on the rear. Did you come to rear for that training camp? No, I didn't come. Did you not go? Were you no. injured then? I wasn't, wasn't allowed. You wasn't allowed. No, I think it's because I wasn't fully fit. And they just yeah, wanted they to take like, all rounds. Yeah, all I think I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And then going into that year, what was what was your mindset at the start of that year? Oh, I don't remember. Were you thinking in your head, I've got a chance to go to Rio, I want to go to Rio? Yeah. Yeah, was that like yeah, your motivation yeah. at the start Yeah, of that no, year? I've obviously sat down with with Chris and, and everybody and, you know, because he's quite 
you know, calculate and like yeah. dates and times, routines, certain numbers and um so like and that I do better with that. So obviously I'm better if I have a plan I know I go into there, do the A B C. Yeah. I'm happy, I'll go home, yeah. rest up, whatever, yeah. and come back and do whatever. So we had we had a plan. Yeah. We had a plan to get to get to Rio and stuff. Um so I was content with that and and whatever. I don't really watch what other people are doing, like they can do their own thing, like it's their life. Yeah. But then as long as you you're you know, bought into your program then, you know. No, I think that's was... interesting as well, like Chris coming from like that biomechanical kind of yeah. stance, how's that how would you say your training and your career has been different because you've had a coach that's really biased into that and like the, I you guess will, the science behind it? Well, well obviously gymnastics it is, it's all physics, isn't it? Yeah. It's all physics and obviously he does all that kind of stuff and um I think I benefited because he sort of taught me that sort of aspect of gymnastics. So instead of saying just keep your chest in or um, dish, you know, he sort of said like, you know, if you keep your chest in your dish, you know, you're gonna let go on this angle and it's gonna it's gonna affect you this way. So he always tells you the reasons why. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and I, and I feel like I've I've learned a lot from that, and I sort of feel like I can I can adapt it to, you know, watching like when I coach adults or students, like I, I try and use that to them remember George Badescu used yeah, to have his, his yeah, wooden, his wooden character thing, yeah he was got it, it, still got it. he's exactly the same like yeah. he was the same he sort of took you through the motions and, and Ben you said if you do this you're going to go this way or that way or yeah. this is how it's going to affect you like yeah. it was really interesting to me and a lot you find a lot of gymnasts sort of just go uh, yes sir I'll do that and just sort of nod and go don't and ask do it questions. don't ask questions and don't really get involved and that have almost no autonomy in their own gymnastics like you want to learn so then yeah. you don't need somebody there telling you what to do today or whatever like you can sort of do it yourself I think that's yeah that would definitely help me I yeah think, I think always when I have someone that just doesn't tell me do this they explain the reason why it makes yeah. it easier for you to buy into it doesn't it yeah you know? yeah exactly like, oh, okay so there's a reason behind this like, yeah yeah this, and I'll you understand this. it and yeah, yeah you're more likely to want to do it yeah. rather than did, oh why is he telling me to do yeah, it exactly. like, did Chris always take like the lead on like your program and stuff so would he always like say okay we've got three months of this this is what I want you to do and then you do that and then you can just kind of listen yeah, to it so or is it like a two way street or would you so when I also when I was younger it was yeah so it went, it went up until when I was like 1920 or summer, he quit coaching at the club and went to uni to, to lecture full time. Right. But he was still my coach. Do you know what I mean? So he still yeah, set yeah. program stuff. It was around that time when I sort of took a bit more control because obviously he wasn't in the gym every day. So yeah. I, I had to. Um, and it was around that time that we sort of both did it. So yeah. before that, like, it was more or, more or less he was saying do this, do that sort of thing. I'd go, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes sense. It, it explained why we're doing those sort of numbers and stuff. It wasn't until after that, it was sort of like, um, well, how do you feel about that and blah, blah, yeah. and I'd say, well, you know, I don't like doing it on, on a Thursday because I'm doing this in the morning or something yeah. or whatever. It was sort of then and that's when I found that we progressed quicker because it was, it was a lot smarter rather than me just doing what he said. Yeah. Even even though like on our our sick. Yeah. No matter what, I'll go in and just smash out two routines and every piece. It'd be absolutely rubbish, and then I'd be wrote off for the rest of the week. Mm. Or I'd go in and say, Oh, I'm not feeling too great today. And but like, Okay, let's adapt it. Yeah. Let's have a couple of days light and then really go for it Thursday. And that's much more beneficial because you're sort of listening to me. It's that partnership. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That can only be developed over if you've been working together for a long, long period yeah. of time, I guess. Yeah. 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 Like what you and Sergey have. Yeah. Yes, man. Like <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we'll uh, we'll go back and forth. With yeah. each other. We'll both we we'll both get to the same kind yeah. of destination. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then going into twenty sixteen that year, uh, how did the comps go? Like the British and stuff, and then the trials. How would it, can you remember too much about them? No. Two thousand sixteen. Yeah. Because I think twenty fifteen. Did you were win fifteen? You, I won P bar, I bar. Yeah, that was a good year. Fifteen. That was a good year. Yeah. I think. 2013 was the best year comp wise yeah. Euros and world stuff and I think 2015 was my best performance year performance wise I think it was that year that I really I really hit it yeah um, but what were the majors then were it individual was it teams or in 2015 yeah yeah I think there was 2015 there must have been a Europe it must have, it must have been a European one every year and the world was 
Who was it was in 2015? Testing my knowledge now. 2014 was Nanning, China one. 2015, Glasgow. Glasgow. Oh, because we went and watched, remember? Okay, oh, yeah. We yeah. all went and watched, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. It was a team, wasn't it? It was a team one, yeah. Team, yeah. Yeah, the team came second. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I don't know much about gymnastics. <laughs> but sometimes Just that's the good, technical stuff. Sometimes like that's good. You get yeah. guys that want to be so involved in and you get guys yeah. that don't wanna as I when I was a kid I knew everything. Yeah, you yeah, you did. I was yeah. Right weirdo. Yeah. Like I knew everything about women's gymnastics as well, like statistics wise. Yeah. Um as I get older I don't really care too much anymore. Yeah. Like I'm just focused on my own thing. Like yeah. I don't want my brain to be constantly just thinking yeah. about gymnastics, so I've got like other stuff outside yeah. of it. Um and then going into that, sorry, going into that 2016. So then Olympic trials happen. You don't make a team. What was that? What was that like in terms of? Okay, because you're probably mindset 2012. You miss 2012. You're thinking, oh, I'm young. I've got another Olympics. You miss this one. You're looking at 2020 and going, mm, oh, I'm going to be, be well 27, old. 28. <laughs> what were you? Kind of, what was the mind frame? And what was that like having a young kid who's gone and won an Olympic medal? You know the thing that you wanted to you know when you were a kid you set out as a gymnast when you kind of start taking a you're like oh, I want to go to the Olympics I want to have a medal what was it like and that young guy from your club I know he's one of your best mates but it can't have been easy having him win an Olympic medal and then come back to your club while you've you know you've been injured you've had all of these kind of like yeah. setbacks it must have been a weird you must have been in a weird place mentally with all that yeah it, exactly the same as before I'll mix emotions mm. I mean, obviously I would, I would go in and make it all that kind of Thing. but honestly I, I was so proud of him like it was awesome we were all when he were competing in the final we were all sat in the gym all the kids on the floor and stuff and then he was doing his routine and when it landed everyone was like, going mental like like I, I, I'm not I'm not jealous of him I'm mm. super proud like, obviously I, I'm a bit jealous that he got to go and do like he did my dream yeah. but it's also his dream yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's your dream and it's everybody else's dream and like, I was just super happy for him like it, would, it was a great moment and obviously it's great for our club great for BG, great for him, like. Yeah. And I'm sure, mate, he would have never have got there without, you know, having you as a role model in the gym and like seeing you do what you well, do. Well, he would have been rubbish without me. Yeah. <laughs> but with you, mate, you know, you want a medal on high bar. You're yeah. one of the best high bar workers this country yeah. has ever had. You are. Yeah. Like some of the some of the difficulty and some of the stuff. What I admire about your gymnastics, you do big gymnastics. Oh, you know, yeah. you don't shy away from doing risky gymnastics. You, know, yeah. you do death, corners, casinos. Kovac combinations yeah. like, it's exciting gymnastics to watch I think when you've when you perform people are like wow this is yeah. it's either it's the same with me sometimes yeah. it's either like well this is either going to be awesome yeah. or it's going to be fireworks yeah, anyway my like, mum can't take it yeah. <laughs> every time I let go she holds a breath and then my cat's going oh. <laughs> my family's the same mum will yeah. close her eyes especially yeah. when I'm on pollen she doesn't watch yeah. I normally get to the end and just bottle the dismount <laughs> <laughs> so she, she can't hack it um so 2016 goes, all of that buzz, that probably gave you a buzz as well, you know, with that yeah. being around Leeds and all that yeah. media attention, all that kind of stuff that came came with it. What, what and then was guess it? what happened then? Uh, I got injured. What injury was it? My wrist. Wrist. Oh, so the wrist, and that really and that's, that's that what lingered around and kind yeah, of finished. That was the ultimate. Yeah. What was the, what kept you going, man? In going into that twenty seventeen year, because for me, I was like obviously the disappointment of all the Rio stuff, mm. missing out on that, and then it was like four more years. Yeah, <laughs> four more. It's hard. Big slog. It's it? hard. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a long time. It's a big commitment. Yeah. What was what was the motivation like? Was it just take each year as it comes? Was it? Yeah. There's that. Like, simple as that. Like different stages. So like obviously. Did my did my wrist and it was sort of okay. Let's try and um, work out what's wrong. Get back to fitness. Get back on P bars. Get back on high bar. Get routines. Do this comp. Not take it each stage at a time. Yeah. There's no point sitting there and going, oh no, that's so far away. Sort of thing. Or oh, I'm injured again. I can't do anything. You sort of just take it, you know, stage at a time. That's how I got through. But like I, I with my wrist, I sort of made three mini comebacks. So I sort of got to the stage where I was like, okay, let's let's have it, let's do yeah. it, this comp coming up, like I'm feeling good, and then, oh no, my wrist hurts again. Okay, let's have surgery on it, let's make sure it don't come back again. Get back to fitness, yeah, let's do it, like, I'm ready to go. Mm. Wrist flares up again, oh, maybe we didn't need surgery in the first place, it was, 
do you know what I mean? And then it was like, okay, and then I was like, okay, well, let's just try again. Like, this is what I do. Do you know what I mean? I've just had keep going nearly ten comebacks or whatever in my life. That's just that's just what I do. I don't I don't quit. Yeah. I didn't want to give up. That's yeah, what it was. I didn't want to give up. And it just sort of grinds down on you, and you know, it was the the moment I sort of started to think about wanting to retire was like I went up to Little Shawl and I was seeing the medical staff and stuff, and I was. I was driving home, I just had a scan. So I had a scan there and then the, the doctor, um, Chris, he was telling me what was wrong with it, blah, 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 about the scan. And I was driving home and it was it was weird because I said to myself, if it's if it's knackered, if I need another surgery or whatever, it's knackered, I'll 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 quit. I'll I'll retire. I won't quit, I'll retire. You know, I'll call it a day. I've, I've done a lot in my career, I've been places, met some great people. Yeah. I leave it there, but then the scan came up with there was nothing wrong with it, and I was right. driving home thinking I was a little bit, almost a little bit gutted. You kind of almost like I wanted an excuse right. to better say, "Oh look, guys, I'm injured again. I think I'm just gonna call it a day." And then I was thinking, well, if I'm having those thoughts, then why am I doing, why am I doing it? it? Do I truly want to be? And I'm driving home having some deep ass conversation in my head just ask myself some some questions and really analysing it and thinking well why why do I want to do it why am I coming back if I'm having those feelings of I want an excuse to quit then what's the point like if you're going to be a high high level sportsman or gymnastics very dangerous you need to be 100% committed to the cause Mm. and if I'm in training thinking oh you know I I don't really I mean just just doing it just just because that's all I've done my whole life I'm just just doing it because it's just what I do I'm actually watching the gymnast do comes back from injury do you know what I mean so then I was down thinking well maybe it's not what I want he's got to think about quality of life and all that kind of things and that's when the cog started turning of maybe I want to pursue do you remember when that was Um. I don't know. That was maybe, maybe a year ago, a year ago ish. Kind of this time last year. Yeah, yeah, and then it was over the next six months. It were kicking in, and I were coming back from my wrist again. Yeah. But I didn't. I didn't have the fire that I had before. I didn't mm-hmm. have the spark. I didn't. I was just going through the motions. Yeah. And then I was always going over in my head, and then I sat down and spoke to Chris, my coach, and then he he saw it coming. He saw it coming, and. Obviously, he didn't want to be the one to say, look, like, you know, you maybe should think about doing something else or think about leaving the sport or anything. Like, yeah. He wanted to come from me, and it did, it did, and it wasn't like a rash decision of, oh, sack it, I can't be bothered anymore. It was a full on, and I have no regrets. Mm. No regrets. I've, sort of, I've been retired about six months, officially like three months, but no regrets. No regrets. Sad man. <laughs> it's because so the then day, I start it? thinking about when I get, you know, I get yeah, to that yeah. stage. Like, yeah. what's keeping me going now is like, I'm only thinking whatever happens yeah. to the Tokyo, that was my end point. You know, yeah. that's what's kind of, that's helping me get through all of this. Yeah, yeah. But it does, you're right. Every time you come back, it gets, that, it gets a bit harder. Yeah. It gets a bit harder. Yeah. And that mentally, it's harder yeah. mentally. You it can do it because you've done it before, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can remember uh, I nearly snapped my knee in 2017 and I thought I did, I thought I'd done my ACL and I, but it scared me that I was like, I'm going to lose this. Yeah. But then when I did my ankle in March last year uh, at the British and I got stretched off, I can remember thinking because I thought I snapped my Achilles right. and I couldn't think, this is it. I said, this is it, I'm done. I can't mm. do another big comeback. Yeah. And I think if I had done something really serious, I, I might have given up Yeah. Then. But... Uh, it came back and it wasn't serious and I could get back from it so I carried on but I, I remember thinking in the first few months this is the last time Yeah. I just haven't got it in me again Yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. it, you're right and it's got to come from you like yeah. when that f- it's a sad thing to see when that fire's gone you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I've seen it in like a few people like I didn't I never really saw it in you too much yeah. you know because you're that happy yeah. go lucky yeah. guy and like yeah. do, you, do you sometimes feel the pressure to be that positive guy because you always are that guy uh, well, you just I don't think it's just it's yeah. just me. It's who yeah. I am. Like, I I don't like feeling sad or yeah. unhappy. Yeah. So I just don't let myself. Yeah. I yeah. just I, I'm, it's hard to explain. Like, it's not like it's a choice. It's not. Yeah, it's it not like I'm putting a face on. It's no, like no, no. we'll turn cameras off and I'll, I'll yeah. cry on the way home. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's not. It's not that. Like, 
I just always try and look for the positives and just try and be happy. What's the point in being sad? Where do you, like, where does that come from? Where do you think that comes I from? I think from family, yeah. the environment that you're around. Like, I have yeah. such a great family and they're always having a laugh and, you know, it's almost humor. like, I, I know I, humor, humor, humor like, oh, whenever yeah, I come to you, honestly, honestly, you're just laughing, just yeah. laughing. Honestly, if you don't <laughs> yeah. laugh, you'll cry, do you know what exactly. I mean? Yeah, what would you rather yeah. do? Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Yeah, because that time's going to come for me. Yeah. <laughs> that time's going to come soon. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think um, now, I mean, like the last few years, I've really grown up and kind yeah. of, I know myself a lot better and I'll mm. be able to like kind of deal with that process. But you never really know. Yeah. I guess, as cliche as it sounds, mate, like you'll, you'll know. Like, yeah. You never thought, I've never thought it'd happen to me. Never thought it. Like, I'm sure you think that as well. Like. Yeah, yeah. But it, it will, mate. It, it will. gets tiring though, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah. You know, coming back and the stress and yeah. the, gets it wears you down it yeah. does wear you down like um i know f- f- like it's hard yeah. it's hard you see these young guys coming yeah. through especially the lazy ones you know? yeah <laughs> like, give anything they to be 18 again got, yeah. 18 again no yeah, injuries yeah, yeah. like give yeah. anything to be in that position in it but well, you um, don't realize you're in the in the good days man until you're out of them nah it's true man Heinz, like you i said earlier Heinz, yeah. that's a wonderful thing yeah She's a bitch. I've got some. Um, oh no, I've got some questions. <sighs> kind of pick your brains a little bit. Uh-oh. Um, what? First of all, easy. What's the plan going forward? What's What's actually what's his life look like in the next you know year, a couple of years? Training to try and get on the the stunt register. So how does that work? So you you got to do um, you got to get qualified in certain categories. So obviously I've got my gymnastics, my trampoline and my, my diving, sort of. Um, so I started scuba diving, started kickboxing, started mm-hmm. some climbing and stuff, so. No, I'm, I'm having fun. Yeah. I'm having fun as well as progressing my career path. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Which is, which is perfect for me. Where did that come from? I always imagine you being like a Cirque du Soleil guy. Well, you know, yeah. a bit crazy. This, this, was that, I, I bet that idea was kind of thrown at you a little yeah, bit. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, and, and I've had some offers. Yeah. Obviously, after the world record attempts, like some of the Cirque guys were just like, come on, we want you, we've got eye bars, like yeah, shorts yeah. and stuff. But I, I just see Cirque as being the same as gym. Like, yeah, you've got to train, you'll, you'll, train, you'll, train, you'll, you'll train, you'll com- compete, or you'll do two shows a day. Yeah. For, and I'll do that for five years. Great, I'll save some money, I'll have some good times, but then I'll come home and I'll be in this exact situation. Yeah. But five years later, mm-hmm. it's even less likely to better to go somewhere yeah. so like as as much as it appeals to me I just I've had, I've had enough of that sort of yeah, thing yeah. and I want to sort of do my own do my own stuff and have, and have fun so we were chatting before so coaching is not like something that you really want to not really like, I absolutely love coaching adults students just because it's, it's fun 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 they come in do flips and you know it's from around like yeah go for it and yeah. have, have, a, have a laugh but I don't really want to coach the, the young kids because it's too serious for me. I've I've been through that, and, and I, I almost don't want to put some of the kids through what I went through to to get there. And it's a lot different now. It's it's massively different now. Um. So, but nice. Nah, it's not for me. People people always ask me like because it was people like coaches were tough on it. Some of yeah. the stuff. Yeah. Like you never get away with it yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think though? Like, would you ever change it? Sure. Now I'm like, so well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I did pretty well. Would I? Would I want to go back? Yeah. And there's some of the stuff that was just. I was like, nah, that didn't need to be said, or yeah. it shouldn't have been that way. But I kind of like, I don't yeah. know. Nowadays, it's almost like yeah. the kids are quite. They're so soft yeah. almost, and they, you can't. They're not very yeah. robust, if that yeah. makes sense. Like, I hear that like it, it worked for us. Yeah. But obviously, there's probably hundreds of thousands of kids that exactly. it didn't work for. Yeah. Um. So. I wouldn't necessarily for myself change it. Mm. Yeah, there were some bits that probably shouldn't have like escalated or like, yeah. been said or whatever. But like you say, we are the men we are today because yeah. of that. So I wouldn't really change it. Um, if you were to give yourself a five minute pep talk, oh god, just at any point in your career, like you can go and just have a five minute chat with yourself. What kind of moment would you choose? Oh god, I hate these questions. <laughs> You should have told me so I could have thought about how I'm kind of <laughs> We want just a natural answer, man. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, there's a moment where you're like, God, if I could have had a chat with myself and just said, look. It would have been Japan as I'm stood there before the vault and said, don't do a double twist, you can <laughs> <laughs> Or at least keep your legs together when you land. That would have been it. My one's always like, uh, kind of after Olympics. 
I think right. when Nile came on, we chatted about that because I, right. I just needed someone to have a little chat with me, and just a bit of a hug and a bit of a yeah. Laugh, you know? Oh, I could have done that, man. <laughs> I could have done that. I could have hugged yeah. you. Ah, uh, so that uh, next one, biggest impact on your career. Who would you say has had the biggest impact on your career? It doesn't have to be one person; it can be multiple people. Um, it's a wide variety in it. Obviously, you you take bits from certain people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So like. Obviously, Chris, massive part, coached me since I was eight, you know, my whole career. He taught me everything. But then there's parts where I've been a squad with you and the guys, you know, that sort of, like, we were such a team, like, we had such great times and we pushed each other on, like, yeah, yeah it was it was competitive, like, oh, he's doing that, I need to do that, oh, I need to beat him at the next comp, whatever, but we did really have that bond, that friendship, the brotherhood. Do you know what I mean? Well, like you see, mate, when we go to the stag dude, and then photos of like me, yeah. you, Reese, Max, yeah. from when we were like kids to yeah. like now, like it's crazy. It's like, great. Like, we, we can't. We'd not talk for three months. But it'd be the same when we. But get when together. you see, when you see each other, like yeah. it's like you've never been apart. You know what I mean? It's it's great. That there's sort of friendships that you know people want. Yeah, I know. Like in you, man, I got a friend that will be friends for for life. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think that is probably the the best part about yeah. what we've done is like the friendships and the memories. Yeah. And I always say it's not like the, the medals and stuff are great, yeah. and it makes you feel like you've achieved something. Yeah. And, uh, so like all the pain and the train was worth it, but it's the it's like the memories yeah. with the guys, you know, yeah. like the the star, like isn't in it? Australia. It's the star is. Yeah. Can you remember in Australia when we were jet lagged, like like we were screwed, and someone fell asleep and we were putting sun cream all over the face and just uh, stuff like that. That. Was what? it Reese? No, yeah, Max, wasn't oh, it? Oh, Max, yeah. Was it Max? You laid on the sofa. Max went like, laid on the yeah. sofa, we were, we were, we're piling just... tissues on him. <laughs> <laughs> just stuff like that. Yeah, when that I, yeah. when, oh, mate, we got that boomerang, we went on that park, and I've lobbed that boomerang and it and smashed really, that yeah. window. Oh, my and I just God. Ran, yeah. Just like legged it. Oh, just stuff God. like that. Like, that's the stuff. Oh, that's what God. you're going to remember, yeah. you know, when you're older. Like, yeah. That stuff. Well, I love to reminisce. If you could do one if you, one routine, one routine in your career, if you could do it one more time, which routine would it be? And it could be for different I, reasons. People choose. Well, like, I do my European one and I catch my Coleman. Yeah. So that, that, that's that'd be great. Be. Yeah. Because yeah. that that could have really changed my career. Yeah. That could have really bumped me up into like the world stage sort of thing. So would mean? you? Uh, so then would you maybe think about going and having a pep talk yourself before that and saying like, just go for it, don't. I'm just well, I'm two pet talks now. No, but you know what I mean. Like, do you think yeah, back well, then and think, oh, if I with the hindsight of experience now, I could have had a chat with myself back then. Yeah, possibly. Like, yeah, and said, no, take every skill, concentrate, and, yeah. and sort of do your job. But that's that you just, just experience, isn't it? Yeah, you exactly. Got, yeah, you can't. That's one thing you can't buy, and in, yeah. in anything, especially in gymnastics, I think it's like the experience of knowing. Uh, I was at camp last week in Germany, and you've got the little, the young ones that just come up, seventeen, eighteen. All guns blazing on the first two days, right, like 110 yeah. miles an hour, and then they're just dying out. And you got the old boys, like yeah. slowly yeah. getting into it, and then gradually get yeah, better, yeah. better throughout the rest of the camp. Yeah, it's just that experience. Mm. Um, last one. If you could give some advice to an athlete that's considering going to uni and studying alongside kind of doing sport, what advice would you give to them? If they're like maybe unsure, a bit 50 50, don't know whether to do it. Um, I'd personally say do it but um, what I did was I did a foundation degree to start with which is more flexible hours um, you don't do as much and you can always top up afterwards I think it's such a great benefit to have that sort of distraction and also knowing that you have something else in your life as well so it's not like you're putting all your eggs in one basket mm. all into your sport whatever it might be You've also got that other side that it's not just you, the athlete, that depends on winning medals, you know. But you've also got your uni, you've got a future career path. Even if you don't go into that afterwards, at least you have that option. Yeah. You know, you, you sort of got you got more to work with. I'd say yes, go for it. Mm-hmm. And the last one, I ain't got this written down. <laughs> just, what advice would you give, you know, me, I've got one year left. You know, obviously we're good friends. Now you've retired and you've finished. What advice would you give to me? You know, with, you know, in my head I'm thinking one more year and then I'm going to kind of go on to the next chapter. What would you, what kind of advice would you give to someone, me or anyone in my position that's probably thinking the same thing mm. with Tokyo on the horizon? 
fucking go for it, man. <laughs> just fucking go for it, because you got you got naught to lose. Mm. I mean, you're saying you got, you got one more year. Yeah. I watched one year in the rest of your life. Mm. But then, even then, even then, think about the rest of your life in 50, 60 years' time. Yeah. You're not gonna be like, oh, you know, you know, you want no regrets. You're like, oh, well, you know, if I would have tried yeah. this or done that, or whatever. Like, what's one year in your entire life? Yeah, it's hardly anything. Come on, Sam. <laughs> Come on, awesome. Thank you, my friend. It's uh, been a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you for having me.